Today I'm going to run through some ideas about shockwave formation in, in traffic flow. So I've already sketched the, the basic elements that we'll need. So we start off with the traffic flow equation. So this is a first order nonlinear wave equation. Um, we're going to be using the Green Shields law for the velocity. That's this linear relationship here. And then finally, um, I'm looking at initial density which is a piecewise linear function so when x is less than epsilon 0 that's this line here I've got one value that's rho L for the density when x is greater than epsilon I've got another value that's rho R and then in between I've got a linear function interpolating between the two so the initial density is described by these two values, um, rho left and rho right. And I want to consider the case where rho left, so the density on the left, is less than the density on the right. And this will then mean that the traffic on the left is faster than the traffic on the right. And this is the conditions we need for a, a shock formation in this, in this system. So let's draw the characteristics for the problem. So here's my position, and here's time. And then we're going to mark the, rate, the region between minus epsilon and epsilon. And on the left, well, that's where we've got the fast moving traffic. So the characteristics will be something like this okay so straight lines uh, with a relatively low gradient in this XT diagram and then on the right so I have slower moving traffic and indeed the wave speed could be negative in this case so the characteristics here might look something like this so again, a set of parallel lines, but with a different gradient uh, to before. In particular, this is negative here. And of course, the point we're interested in is this point here, because this is where the shock forms. And we could fill in the rest of the characteristics if we wished uh, in this region. And they're all converging to this point where the shock forms. Okay. So the first thing we're going to work out today are the coordinates of this shock formation. So what is the value of x where the shock forms and what is the value of t where the shock forms. And we're going to use a notation, so x sub s and I'm going to put a little zero there, and that's to indicate, so x sub s, s is for shock, and the zero is for where the shock forms, the very first point. Correspondingly for the time, so this is t sub s, also with a zero, so this is position and time of shock formation. And we'd like to calculate these. And the key to doing so, if we go back to our diagram here, is to note that the two, um, the two characteristics, the form of which we know that meet at the shock formation, at, at this one here, so at the edge of the green region, so this characteristic, and that characteristic meets this one here, So we know the equations of these two characteristics, they're straight lines, so if we equate them we can work out the position and time of the, foc of the shock formation. So the two characteristics that we're interested in, so from the left we have x equals, so this is, uh, here I'm travelling with the wave speed CL, times t minus epsilon, 
So this epsilon comes from the fact that the characteristic we're talking about starts at minus epsilon. And it has the velocity for the, for the left-hand side, which is this CL, which is defined as the C evaluated at the density on the left. The other one we want, so that's the one from the right-hand side, so come back to here, this starts at, uh, for time equals zero, this starts at x equals epsilon. So the appropriate characteristics is CR for on the right, T plus epsilon. And again, this CR is nothing but the wave speed evaluated at the density on the right. So I can equate these two uh, equations for the line, for the two characteristics. Whoops. So this gives me CLT minus epsilon equals CRT plus epsilon. And since I've bothered to introduce the notation, this T here is the time at which the, the shock uh, forms. So this is a, a, just a linear equation. I could rearrange this to get my answer for Ts of 0. And what you should find is I get 2 epsilon over the difference in the, the wave speeds. To get the position, so I now know Ts of 0. So I sub this back into... Well, I could take either of these uh, expressions for the characteristics. This is the one on the left. So I pop this value for the time in here and rearrange. And this gives me so x sub s 0 equals epsilon times the sum of the two velocities divided by their difference. Okay, so that's the time and the position of shock formation. Just want to go a little bit further than this and look at what happens after the shock formation. So what is the so now we have a discontinuity in our in our um, in our solution where the density is jumping from a value uh, row s on the left to a row r on the right. And the question is, what happens then after this shock has formed? And the answer is given by this rankine bujonio conclusion uh, condition, rather, sorry. Which, so this, this applies specifically for the green shields model that we're looking at. model. So this tells me that the position of the shock, the position of the of the discontinuity in my density travels with a speed so d by dt of x s of t. So this is now that this is now the position of the shock after it's formed. So the rate in change of that position is given by the average of the wave speeds across the jump. So it's one half CL plus CR. So given that I know that, I can write down the equation of the discon discontinuity in my solution. So I have X of S, so minus its starting position divided by the time of the shock minus the starting time, or the time of shock formation. Well, this must be given by this average velocity. And this we can simplify. So we put in our results for xs0 and ts0. And then we simplify things. I'm not going to go through that here. It's just a bit of algebra. 
to give us an expression for this xs of t and actually this one works out particularly simply uh, due to the symmetry in the initial conditions actually so we get s x of t equals one half cl plus cr times t so that's what the shock does and this of course is only valid when the shock is there so this must be for when t is greater than t s of zero so let's just make a quick sketch of, of what's going on there so this is x this is t need a minus epsilon and a plus epsilon um, and we follow so we followed this characteristic and we followed one from the other side so really I wanted to use a blue pen for this one and then they met at some point let's just get rid of this little nubbins here okay so those two characteristics really end there at the shock formation and then after that so actually let's let's write write on some other things. So this is T S of zero. So that's the time where the shock occurs. We can bring this down here. This is the position where it occurs. And then after that, so now we have a discontinuity in our solution, and this will uh, proceed in a straight line so with the um, with the corresponding average slope and this is our shock shock wave and its equation is there for this guy that we just worked out Okay, now to work out the position and time of the shock formation in this uh, traffic flow model with a piecewise linear initial condition. And then once we've done that, we can use the rankine eugenio um, equation to see what happens after that, in particular determine the velocity of this discontinuity in the density.